A really popular use case for LLMs is writing code. And a lot of times they're also going to execute that code. But this can be really dangerous. What if the LLM writes code that's not safe or is potentially harmful? In order to get around that, you should use a code sandbox and we built one for you. My name is Nick and today we're gonna to walk through the Langchain Sandbox, a tool that we built to help with this. So what is Langchain Sandbox? Langchain Sandbox is a secure environment for executing arbitrary, untrusted Python code. Langchain Sandbox leverages PyDide to run that Python code in a sandbox WebAssembly environment, and it also leverages Dino, which isolates the code execution. When you execute code in the Langchain Sandbox, you get useful information back from the standard output and standard error amongst other values as well. Let's take a look at a quick example. First, we need to make sure that the Langchain Sandbox package has been installed. The first thing that we're going to do is import the PyDide Sandbox from the Langchain Sandbox package, and we're gonna instantiate it here. Notice that we instantiate it with allow net equals true. We'll go into this a little bit more in a moment, but essentially this allows PyDide to install the Python packages that are going to be required without you having to define them upfront. Next, we'll define a small code snippet. All this is going to do is import NumPy and create a NumPy array. We'll pass this code snippet into the sandbox execute function here and await the response. Let's see what we get. This prints out the code execution result and we have it in the comments here. We didn't return anything, so the result for this is none, but we can see that in our standard output, we printed out the full array. There were no errors and there's some other metadata as well, like the execution time and when the session was created. Now let's run through a few specific features that make Langchain Sandbox particularly powerful. For one, everything in Langchain Sandbox is executed locally, which means your data and your information stays under your control. Langchain Sandbox also sets up your Python environment dynamically by detecting and installing the required dependencies like we just saw. This means that you don't need to worry about declaring which Python libraries are needed ahead of time. Langchain Sandbox can also be used in a stateful manner, this allows you to retain variable assignments across multiple code executions. Let's go ahead and take a quick look at an example of that here. Our code looks pretty similar. The only difference is that we now have the stateful argument set as true when we instantiate the PyDide sandbox. Just like before, we're going to pass in the simple code string that creates a NumPy array. When we execute it, the result is going to look largely the same as before. The main difference is that we now have this field called session bytes. Session bytes aren't meant to be human readable, but it's how we can retain information about our variable assignments. And so if we then execute our sandbox again with these session bytes passed in from our last result, we're going to be able to continue. And in this case, we just want to print out the first value of our NumPy array. And as you can see, we're able to print out that value even though we didn't define the variable code snippet that we just passed in. So now we've taken a look at both stateless and stateful execution in the Langchain Sandbox. There are a few common patterns to utilize arbitrary code execution in an LLM agent. And the two use cases we'll be showing off today are first as a code execution tool in a React style tool calling agent. And second, as the main execution environment in a code act style agent. To give a bit of background, the React tool calling agent is a pretty popular architecture. An LLM is provided with a list of tools that it can make use of. The LLM then makes use of its function calling capabilities and decides which tools to call in series or in parallel one turn at a time. When a tool is called successfully, the tool then gets executed and the response is provided back to the LLM. The LLM then decides to call another tool in its arsenal or decides to eventually finish by not making any more tool calls. Here, we can provide our Langchain sandbox as a single execution environment for the LLM to run arbitrary code as a tool. Let's take a closer look. First thing that we're gonna do here is define our tool. Here, we'll import our PyDide sandbox tool from the Langchain sandbox package. Now, we're going to instantiate the tool and we're just gonna run it with a simple code string that prints hello world. Cool, we can see that we printed hello world. Now let's actually pass this tool into our React agent. 
Just like before, we're going to instantiate this tool and we're going to pass an allow net equals true, again, to allow Pyodide to install any packages that it might need. We're then going to pass this tool into our create react agent prebuilt component, and we're going to use cloud 37 sonnet for our agent here. With the simple react style agent, we're going to invoke it on a simple message that asks a math question. This isn't trivial, this is matrix multiplication, so let's see if our agent chooses to make use of its code execution tool. Once it's done executing, we're going to print out all of our messages, and we'll also take a closer look in Langsmith to see exactly what happened under the hood. Let's see how all of this worked by clicking into the trace in Langsmith. Clicking into our first chat anthropic invocation, I can see that given this question, we're able to get this tool call output. And we actually only provided the single tool this Python code sandbox tool to our LLM in this case. This tool has a description that's pretty helpful and interesting. We ask that to return output, we always write code with print. And this is powerful because what we printed out is what the LLM is actually going to be able to see. And so here we call this print with our matrix multiplication, just like we saw. Our tool node is then in charge of actually executing the sandbox, which gives us back the value. And finally, we call the chat anthropic model one more time to package the answer nicely and give the final response to the user. And so like we just saw, LLMs are phenomenal at writing code. And code often involves stringing together multiple steps or function calls in a series for a single cohesive solution. Code act can be a really great technique if the model that you're using doesn't support tool calling or is better at writing code. If the tasks that your agent are working on are typically multi-turn or require several steps, CodeAct can be a powerful architecture because it allows your agent to write out the whole plan in a single response. This can be especially useful when the output of the first function call might be part of the input for a later function call, since you can just save that variable. We'll see that whole value in our execution environment and then reuse it. Let's go ahead and build a CodeAct agent that leverages our sandbox. So the first thing that we're going to do here is we're going to define some tools. And in this case, these are just a bunch of math functions that our agent is going to have access to. We then add these tools to a list, which we'll later provide to the agent. Now, this is the interesting piece, creating the actual evaluation sandbox with our Pyodide sandbox. So what we do here is we build an evaluation function. And this evaluation function is actually going to take two things. It's going to take in the code to execute but it's also going to take in this dictionary of local variables. And these variables are going to be those that our code is going to assume that it has access to. And what we can see here in the wrapper code function is that after we actually execute the code, we're going to return this locals dictionary. Later on, we're going to save that value in our code act agent so that the next time it runs, it has access to the same local variables. How we do this is by converting those items in the locals dictionary into key value pairs and essentially setting all of those values in the code as part of this context setup. This way, when we actually execute our sandbox, we're passing in both that context setup and the new code to be executed. Finally, we're going to take the output results, which again was that locals dictionary, and we're going to update our new variables, which is saved in our agent state for future use. Let's go ahead and try this with Claude 37. We have a separate video on our CodeAct agent, which is really great. And you should check that out to learn more about how CodeAct works. But here it's going to be pretty simple. We're going to instantiate our Pyodide sandbox just like before, and we're going to pass the safe execution environment into our create Pyodide eval function. This then gives us that eval function, which will pass into the create CodeAct function. Once we compile the agent with our check pointer, we can then run it. Let's go ahead and run this agent on a pretty hard physics problem. We're going to hit a baseball at a specific angle, and we're going to see how far that baseball is going to travel from where the batter originally hits it. Let's go ahead and take a look at this output in Langsmith to see the full stack trace, just like before. So now that we're in our Langsmith trace, let's take a look at the first model called to chat anthropic. This is a system prompt that essentially gives our agent the full list of tools that it has at its disposal, so all of these math functions. It also gives a reminder to use Python code to call all of these tools. We then get the human question, 
which is our physics problem about how far the baseball will go. And so the first output from the first step is our AI writing some Python code to help it calculate the answer. We set the gravitational constant, we use some other equations to calculate how far the ball travels, and we iterate on this calculation a few times. What actually happens in the sandbox is it takes in the script as the input and then actually runs the code. And it makes use of a lot of those math functions that we had defined as tools above. Again, there are two things outputted here. We get anything printed out, which is all of these calculations and values, but we also get that full locals dictionary. This is helpful because if we want to iterate again, we'll have access to all of these variables as a starting point. Finally, we have a final chat anthropic, and we make this call to access the full message history and formulate our final output to the user. So in this video, we talked about how you can leverage the LangChain sandbox for arbitrary code execution in a secure environment. One of the benefits is that everything is executed locally. Another benefit is that the sandbox takes care of the environment setup for you and installs all of the required packages. And then finally, you have options for both stateless and stateful execution. We saw how you could use the sandbox as a code as a tool for a React agent. And we also saw how you can use the sandbox as the main execution environment for a Kodak style agent. Thanks for watching.